Thank you for your interest in Kapow software. In this video, I'll be demonstrating automating content migration with Kapow Catalyst. This is the Kapow Extraction Browser. The Extraction Browser allows us to interact with and extract content from the website. We can extract visual components from the website, such as images or text along with non-visual values such as metadata from the HTML or properties from the browser such as the URL. The content of interest is selected visually and mapped into a structured data object with attributes that you define. This is an overview of Kapow's content migration process. The content is extracted directly from the website or other sources with Kapow robots and stored into an intermediate database. Here, the content can be formatted, categorized, and transformed to meet the taxonomy of the target CMS. The content can be uploaded as XML by way of REST web services, SOAP web services, Sling forms, or whatever custom API or standards-based API is provided by the CMS. Content can also be uploaded into the CMS without using an API at all, simply by loading the CMS's website into Kapow's extraction browser and mapping the content into the CMS through the UI. These are the steps to Kapow's content migration process. First, a database inventory of all the URLs that make up the site will be created. A robot will crawl the website and collect all the URLs of all the HTML pages, along with the URLs of all of the resources, including images and other binary files. Next, we access each item from the inventory database table. The resource files are saved off to the local hard drive, and the HTML is parsed through to extract the content as structured data objects. We then enrich and transform the content as needed before uploading it to the target CMS. Central to the Kapow Catalyst design environment is the extraction browser, which we've loaded our sample website into with the first step of our robot here that you can see up above. I can create additional steps in the robot simply by interacting with the content in the extraction browser. For example, I'll recreate the next step in the robot, the for each URL step. I'll simply select this step, delete it from the robot, and then recreate that step by selecting the site, expanding the scope to the entire page, right-clicking on the page, selecting the type of step that I want to add. I want to add a loop, a for each URL, and as I click on this, the step is added back into the robot above. I can now click on the for each URL step and watch the robot step through the site URL by URL. The next step in the robot will actually extract the value that we have selected on the page. So for example, you can see currently we have this text selected and the HTML down below, you can see the href value is faasafety.gov forward slash some content. So this step, extract URL, which is configured here, is going to extract that text value and store it into the inventory.url attribute. So as I click past that step, in real time, we can verify that the URL value has been populated here. The next step in the inventory robot is the isInDomain logical step. This step checks if the current URL is within the domain that we're doing an inventory of. And as you can see visually here, this content is from the faasafety.gov website. It does not belong to the aopao.com site. So when I try to pass this step, Kapow Catalyst is going to let me know that we can't reach the next step because we did not pass that logical test. So we'll go to the next element in the loop, and that value is extracted into the URL attribute. The value is aopao.com forward slash some content, and that does contain aopao. So we pass that logical test and move on to the next three tests. The next three steps in the robot check if the current href that we have selected is one of these CMS generated buttons. If it is, we don't want to add the URL to our inventory. In this case, it's not, so we can pass by these tests and continue to the next step where we get the content type of the current URL, which happens to be an HTML page, so that content type is going to be set down here in our inventory object when I pass the step. Now we have the content type and the URL in our inventory object. We can now try to load the page and verify that it's a valid link. Now that we've verified that the link is valid, we verified that the URL belongs to the domain, it's not a CMS generated button, we can finally store it into our inventory database. Once we've run through this step by step for a single page and verified that the workflow and the robot works as we want it to, we can then switch to debug mode and run the robot and watch the content extracted from the pages, each URL and each content type, page by page, 
just as it would at runtime. This is the first of two extraction robots. This one's fairly simple. There's no visual component. We're simply going to query the inventory database that we just created and find all of the URLs for the resource files, such as the PDF files, JPEGs, etc. We're going to save all those files to the local hard drive and then store the location back in our database table. I'll switch to debug mode now and run the robot and here we can see each URL, each file name, and each file size as it's saved off to the local hard drive and the file location is stored back to our database. The second extraction robot goes back to the inventory database and this time we're going to query for all of the HTML content. After the page is loaded I'm going to select the main menu to determine the category of the content on this page. This is done with the find tag step. Here is where the find tag step is defined. We're going to look for active item within the tag. Here in the HTML below, you can see that the first item of the main menu is designated as the active item. When I click past this step, that menu item is found. When I click past that, we extract the text and store it as our category over here in our HTML content object. In the next step, we define an area within the page as an article. We're going to have a loop that goes through every article on the page and it finds the title of the article. And that's mapped into our content object down here when I pass the step. And the next attribute is the subtitle. That's mapped into the content object. And then the article date. And as you notice, the article date that was mapped into our object here is in a different format than you see here in the article. That's done with this converter. This is one of many converters provided in Kapow Catalyst. This particular converter does a pattern match on the date and converts it into the format that we want. There's also converters for other types of arithmetic functions and other text converters available. The next step extracts the author and then we extract the content of the article. And now that we've fully populated our content object, we're ready to store that object into the database. So we've gone through the robot step by step for one article on one page. This is exactly how you design a robot. You load one page that you know has a similar layout to many other pages. You select the content on the page, define it, and map it into your object, and then create the business rules to transform the content and format it exactly how you want to see it and store it in your database. Now we're going to run this in debug mode and allow the robot to run through all of the articles on the first page. When it gets to the final article, It'll load the next page, load all the articles on the next page, and if we have any issues with the layout on other pages, the debugger will let us know. I'll hit play, it runs through to the 16th article and stops us at extract subtitle. Here, I simply hit the go to button in the debugger. That brings us back to the Visual Design Studio where we can see that the 16th article doesn't have a subtitle. So this is the problem that we've hit and we can simply solve this by changing our robot now we can add a branch to the robot where we handle this case in a different way or we can set a default value for the subtitle or we can simply handle it with error handling say ignore and continue if it's not a required field now that we've made this quick change we can go back to the debugger and run it again this time we go past the 16th article and we're going through all the pages we're on the 14th, 15th, and 16th page it's this rapid, iterative design process that allows you to continuously fine-tune your robot until you can extract all the content from all the pages as you visually verify that the content is formatted and structured to match the content model in your target CMS. Now that we have all of our content in our intermediate database, we're ready to upload that content to Sitecore. The first thing we're going to do is log into Sitecore. Now we're going to create a collective XML file that will have all of our resource files within the XML file and then we're going to upload that XML file into Sitecore. So step by step the first thing we're going to do is we're going to create the XML file. So we're using the write file step. Here's where we define the file that we're going to create. We're going to name it aopaomedia.xml and currently we're creating the file content to simply be the header for the XML file. What we're going to do now is go to the database of resource files. We're going to select each resource file from the database and store it into our data object. We're going to now assign a GUID. This is one of the functions provided in Kapow. Here under the functions list we can see we have many other functions but currently we're going to use the GUID function to create an ID for the current resource item. The next step updates the intermediate database with the GUID for that record. 
The next step loads the binary file content into our data object. The next step, Base64 encodes that content. And again, this is one of the functions available here in Kapow. We can encode or decode Base64 along with many other functions. The next thing we're going to do is get the file extension. And we do that with a simple regular expression. So we're getting the file extension from our file path location. The regular expression selects the characters after the final period in the string. The next step is also a convert attribute step. Again, using a regular expression, this time to select the file name from the same attribute. Now that all the attributes have been retrieved, we can map the attributes into the XML template. The XML template currently has all capital variable placeholders that we'll be replacing with the actual values from the attributes in the data object. The assign attribute step is configured with a list of converters off to the right. As you can see, the first converter gets the template. The next set of converters replaces each of the all capital variables with the values from the data attributes. The resulting fully populated XML is saved into the payload attribute. We can now view the payload attribute and verify that all the attributes have been mapped into the XML correctly, including the image data. And now the write file step is used to append this XML to our XML file. Now we're going to go back through the loop again, getting the next resource from our database and adding it into the XML file. We're going to continue to do that for each of the files in the database until we get to the final file, and then we'll take this branch, we'll close the XML file, which means we're simply going to add the closing tags at the end of the XML file, and then we're going to upload that file using the SC import item XML command line tool and we're going to upload the file that we just created. So let's go to debug mode now and run this and here we can see as each image file is added to the XML file and at the end of that process that XML file is loaded with the command line call. Now let's take a look at the fully constructed XML file that was uploaded. Here's our XML header and then each of the files we've got the file name the path that we'll be uploading into Sitecore, the GUID, the MIME type, the extension, the media type, followed by the actual binary for that file. This occurs 16 times for the 16 files, and then at the end, the XML close tags. And finally, we can open Sitecore and verify that each of our image files was uploaded by the Sitecore command line tool that was executed by the final step of the robot. The robot for uploading articles to Sitecore is nearly identical to the robot that we just looked at for uploading the resources. We log into Sitecore, create the XML file, and now we're going to query our database of articles. As I pass by the query database step, the first article is loaded into our data object. The next step assigns a GUID. We set the GUID in our database, and then we get the attributes that we have in our data object and map them into our XML template. This time, our XML template has a different set of attributes as defined in Sitecore for the article object. When we pass the assign attribute step, the payload attribute is populated. We can view the payload attribute and verify that all of the fields have been filled in properly. The XML is then added to the XML file, and this is done for each article in the database. And when that's complete, we close the file, adding the close tags to the XML, and then we upload the XML file with the command line tool again. I'll switch to debug mode, we'll run the robot, and watch as all the articles are added to the XML file, and finally, the XML file is uploaded to Sitecore with the command line tool. We can go back to Sitecore now and verify that the articles were uploaded. Open our articles folder, and each of the articles with all the attributes that were in the XML are now uploaded into Sitecore. If you have any questions or you would like to see a more in-depth content migration demonstration, please use the information below to contact Content Migration Sales at Kapow Software.